afternoon. Good afternoon. in this talk. One part which actually snuck in uh, un unawares, uh, snuck in uh, without me really rea realizing it. It's not this part though. Uh, this part is about the Prince of Persia that came in 1989 by uh, I guess it's pronounced. I'll give you a little example of how it may look to this. This is actually slightly faster than it is actually played, but it gives a good overview of the different uh, traps and, and moves that you can make in the game. This guy is a pacifist, he doesn't actually kill the birds. Quantifier, 
factors, so plus and times, and this might actually match in several different modes. They can be greedy, or they can be sort of a little less greedy and more frugal, or they can totally refuse to to uh, give any backtrack behavior, depending on which flags you give them. There are subrules which are sort of portals to different levels. So you go there and you complete that level, and then you come back and uh, continue with the ordinary level. Then there's lookarounds, which is sort of a ghost thing. You leave a ghost image of yourself, and then you go complete a level, and then you come back and you change yourself. Uh, character classes, uh, which are sort of branching out into different universes, and you have to uh, complete at least one little quest before you can go on. And anchors, which are also sort of little quests. Uh, tests like, are we at the beginning of the stream? Is this a non-new line character and things like that. So little small things that you have to succeed or might fail with. Alternations is also a branching out operation. The really scary one is conjunctions, where you branch out in two different things simultaneously, and then you have to sort of be lucky enough to uh, merge back in the same position in the stream. But this is all possible to put in game metaphors. Concat is also that's just a level of several different things after one another. The main analogy here, of course, is that a game looks like this. You have the game in the middle with the levels, and uh, you put in user input, that's all the up, down, left, right keepers as you made. And as a general result, we might either win or lose the game. And of course, that can be more detailed put in, into that win or lose condition. You might win along a certain path, more or less desired path, and you might lose for a special, very specific reason you fell onto those particular spikes or whatever. But the situation with the regex is exactly an analogous. The user input here is the string we try to match against, and this string is sort of the player who tries to get through the levels and, and succeed against all these different traps that we set up against it. And here, again, we can match in several different ways and uh, that's shown with the different captures that we make. We match through it right here, and we match far over there. Or it might fail for very specific reasons as well, and then we're interested in those also. Here's an example of a six crickets. You see, it has several parts. Big from, sorry. Yummy, yeah. Yeah, I should mention that the mm, -mm in the beginning means uh, not only do we match, but we also match uh, with regard to white space. So between the and quick there, for example, we expect some kind of white space. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's like a regular, regular, regular space. Um, so with this one, we can <coughs> match grammatical uh, phrases in English. So sort of fox jumps and fox jump, that's OK. But Fox jump or Fox's jumps not okay. And how does does this work in practice? Well, you see the uh, angle bracket question mark up there that expects a true thing inside of the curly braces. And we have dollar zero there, and what's dollar zero? It's not the file name. It's in the file, but it's the first match phrase that we have. And uh, so the first one says simply, we match the ES over there. And then it's okay to say just jump. And for it to be okay to say jumps, it has to not match on the ES over there because the plural doesn't go with the third person single S. And ED is always. But here we have sort of mixed in uh, the usual declarative thing with uh, procedural elements little parts of the program that we actually run in the works. And this is possible with Perl 5 as well. It's just that it's much nicer because it's, it looks better. So with this phrase, how, uh, how do we actually turn it into a game or a level that we have in the string and play? Well, in the end, it looks something like this. And it's actually a kind of premonition of that. You have 
you have an engine of some kind, a parser of, of some sort that takes this Regex program and turns it into this tree. And the nodes in the tree, of course, have different various types. It's not extremely important what those types are. It's just worth noting that different types have different rules, and they affect the way we match through the parse tree. So we have the question mark in boxes there, for example, translating into this one node up there. And in the P2 pipes, translating to an alt node. Actually, that might be incorrect. It might translate into two alt nodes, one within the other. Um, I'm not sure if that's spec, whether it should do one thing or not. So it might look like this, or it might have two alt nodes. But the end result is the same. And you see that the two special tests there with angle bracket question mark and angle bracket exclamation translate into closures. So this is the level that the text runs through in order to succeed in, in this particular quick form of box scheme. It is at least one alt in standard. It is. Oh, I'm glad. I think it is in PG also. But it isn't in PG. No. Right. So there are different known variations. Uh, <coughs> a reg is, is a level in the game, and with that analogy, analogy of the grammar is the whole game. Now we're getting to the part that sort of forced itself into my talk. Didn't mean to have this part. One of the key values of Perl in general is sublanguages. <coughs> Anyone recognize this quote? When someone says, I want a programming language in which I need only say what I wish done, give him a volleyball. Who said it and when? Alan Perl is 1982, Epigrams in Programming. You can go read them, they're online, they're quite funny. But with this particular quote, I think he actually was a bit stuck in his time when programming languages were one particular thing and you weren't supposed to corrupt them with uh, declarativeness or uh, forcing them into the ground doing one particular thing good and everything else badly, and you weren't supposed to sort of make them into looking like English. And nowadays we think in terms of generalist languages and specialist languages instead. So the specialist languages definitely have a place. We can formulate it in terms of large languages and small languages or little languages or domain-specific languages. I'm sure you've heard of this. There are many domain-specific languages out there languages out there which are not meant to be solutions for everything, like Perlis, but uh, more exact solutions. SQL is a domain specific language. XPath, find your way through an XML structure. GraphWiz with the dot format to generate graphs in a nice way. Haskell's Doom notation, 